Okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about trout spinners and picking the right one. Um, I got three of the most popular models and brands here. I've got the Yakima Bait Warden's original rooster tail, which a lot of people love. I've also got the Vibrax Blue Fox, which is a very popular one as well. And then Panther Martins. And so today I'm going to go over uh, when I choose these different models because I will vary up which spinner I am fishing with for trout depending on situations and conditions. And we'll just give each of these, you know, a good 15, 20 casts a day and see what we come up with. So I think I'm going to start with a Panther Martin. It's brand new, fresh out of the package. So we'll go ahead and pop this out. I am going to go ahead and uh, just pinch the barbs on this thing because I'm going to be doing catch and release today. And eventually I'll end up changing out this hook anyways. One of the key features that separates Panther Martins from these other two brands, like the Blue Fox, is the placement of the blade. Um, the blade is actually run more centrally uh, down the wire. You see the hole there is more down inside the blade versus this one's right on the very end. This gives it a tighter spin around the body, uh, but it also causes it to wobble just a little bit less when casting. And I'll talk why that's pretty critical. Otherwise it has a bell-shaped body leading down to the hook. So it has a really good flash. That looks really good. And one of the things I like most about Panther Martins is for their size, they have a lot of weight. So you get a small profile, but you get excellent casting distance. And because those blades um, don't flop around as much, especially in windy conditions, I'm going to get further casting distance with the Panther Martin over the other two spinners that I have today, like the Blue Fox and rooster tail. Now another thing I really like about Panther Martins is relative to their blade size, they actually have quite a bit of weight. So I feel like they do an excellent job of, of diving and staying at depth. Um, they don't rush to the surface like some spinners do because of the increased surface area on the blades. So if I cast this out and decide to let it sink a little bit, it's not going to just suddenly come rushing up towards the top. It'll maintain its depth a little bit better than some other spinners will. Let's go down here and see if there's anything along the dam face here. Now, Panther Martins come in a huge variety of colors. They have, they have painted blades and unpainted blades and half painted blades. This one's kind of a brass with red uh, stripes painted on it. And then they'll often have a contrasting body color. Uh, so you can really cater it to what the fish are responding to on that particular body of water. My favorite colors have always been the sort of bumblebee patterns. This is black and yellow with a brass or gold blade. And uh, then they have like a yellow and red blade and then a straight black with like brown dots. And those have always been really productive for me. And they also have holographics too. Um, you can get on the blade. So I, that is another nice thing about the Panther Martin. It's just the diversity of colors. You can really vary it up and dial it into your specific fishery. Finally, the last thing I like about these Panther Martins is uh, the blade rarely ever gets caught up on the line during casting because it has a limited range of motion because of that lower placement of the hole through which the wire runs through. It just doesn't flop around and get snagged up on the line when casting. All right, one more cast. I haven't seen any fish coming up. I don't, not sure. This lake is so low this year. I'm not sure what's gonna happen out here. All right, let's switch it up. All right, next up, I'm gonna run a Yakima bait rooster tail and a rainbow trout pattern. Now, some of the key things that differentiate the rooster tail from the Panther Martin is of course that blade placement is quite a bit different. 
It's a longer, flatter blade, less convex, and it's attached more towards the end. A much larger body, typically relative to the size of the spinner, so has a larger profile, especially because of the add the feathers, the marabou feathers here at the end, which is where it gets its name rooster tail from. And so, yeah, it's a very fundamentally different uh, spinner, very much larger profile and different blade shape and design. So let's give this one a shot. Okay, let's give the rooster tail a run. And one of the things I've noticed right away with rooster tails, um, even when I was a kid, I fished these all the time, is that um, a lot of times the blade won't engage right away. And so like with the Panther Martins and even with the Blue Foxes, I find that that blade will automatically engage. Even as it's falling, you can feel the thump of the, of the blade. But sometimes with these rooster tails, you gotta do just a little bit of an acceleration right at the beginning. And then you'll feel, once you get that blade thumping, then you'll really feel it. And this is the greatest strength, I think, of the rooster tails that it has a very loud, presentation it is a very strong thump you can feel the vibration all the way up through the rod which is why this is one of my favorite spinners when i'm trying to put out a big signal so if it's low light conditions if uh if the water's a little bit off color then this is one of my favorites to go with because see I'm, that blade wasn't spinning there for a little bit um it's one of my favorites to go with just because I know those fish can detect it on their lateral lines. And so it helps to draw those fish in to where they can visually see the spinner because trout are very, very much so visual feeders. Another thing about this one is that it does, relative to the Panther Martin, it does dive, I think, a little bit better. So it, like when you're trolling, if you're gonna troll this from a boat, um, and the fish are feeding in that sort of top five, 10 foot of the water column, you don't really have to add a lot of weight or any weight at all to get it to sort of dive down to a good trolling depth. It'll get down a couple feet on its own if you put it, you know, 45, 50 feet behind the boat. Yeah, see, there we go. So this is something that happens a lot more with rooster tails than with Panther Martins. Because of that blade, what happened when I cast, that blade wrapped around the line and it just buggers everything up. So I do feel like, you know, one out of 10, one out of 15 casts with the rooster tail is not gonna actually be performing like you want it to. And that's why you gotta really try and feel for that vibration, you know, so that you know that you're fishing properly. And it's also one of the reasons why I don't recommend rooster tails for like kids. Um, I think they're better more for anglers who have a little bit of experience casting. So like if you have a kid who's just getting started learning how to cast, I think the rooster tail is a bad choice because they, they have to speed up that uh, retrieve, right one. They have to be able to feel the blade and they're going to get frustrated too with the increased numbers of tangles on these rooster tails. Man, I'm not getting any follows at all. It's not feeling very fishy out here. I haven't been here this year. All right, so the good news on rooster tails is that they have a ton of different colors and sizes and uh, blade colors, blade materials. You can find copper and brass and silver, painted bodies, and then they've of course got that marabou tail, which comes in lots of different colors too. Now, they are really widely available. Like you can find them at virtually every general store like walmart or something um but you tend to find just the same like four or five colors repeated over and over the rainbow trout and brass and chartreuse and silver and chartreuse and that type of thing they have a lot of diversity of colors that are harder to come by and uh they used to make all these and paint all these in in washington state but then they offshored a lot of their manufacturing to Mexico and that even prior to COVID they were having huge supply chain issues and now it's just even worse so I'm not sure when they're going to work all that out but it's been really annoying trying to find some of the less common 
rooster tail colors since they uh, moved their manufacturing to Mexico. All right, last cast with the rooster tail. Okay, now we're gonna do a blue fox. Vibrix. Like the rooster tail, it has the blade, um, has the hole on the far end. It's more of an Indiana style blade, a rounder, uh, oblong blade, instead of like on the rooster tail that's very long and skinny. It's got a little bit more curve to it. It uses this bell body, which is made out of brass rather than a lead body. And the hooks on them are tend to be a little bit oversized, in my opinion, for the size of the spinner. I mean, look how big that hook is. It's a step bigger than on that rooster tail, which is a much heavier rooster tail. It's quite a bit larger than with the Panther Martin. That's one of the things I don't like about the hook is really high quality. Um, see, these are brass hooks. This is a steel hook, high carbon steel. So higher quality hook, but a little bit oversized in my opinion. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pinch the barbs. We'll get this clipped in and do a little bit of fishing with it. Okay, here we go. So the Blue Fox Vibric is one of the things about it that is good is that the blade turns extremely easy. Um, and it turns so well and so fast that it's actually really hard to feel that blade thumping, especially on the smaller uh, spinner. So you really got to pay attention. But relative to the weight of this spinner, the blade is pretty large, which causes this spinner to I say, you know, surf, it comes up to the surface a little bit more than on the other spinners I featured today. So it will tend to run shallower, which is good in weedy situations. And let's say you're fishing in shallow, a shallow river and you don't want to snag up. And there's lots of rocks and logs and snags. You want to run this over the top of the vegetation, then it's a really good choice for you. Also for trolling when fish are feeding like very near the surface, you've seen a lot of surface feeding activity and you wanna get those near surface strikes. This is also another really good spinner. But like I said, the hook size and the blade size relative to the weight are really large. So, you know, I feel like it is a bit of an oversized presentation for uh, the bulk of my trout fisheries. It makes it one of my least uh, favored spinners because of that. Um, I tend to do better on smaller profile spinners that are, are heavier and I can cast more and cover more water. Whereas this, you know, I have to really go with a very light spinner um, that I can't cast as far and I can't cover as much water uh, with. And only in those situations where I'm really trying to keep this uh, spinner above vegetation and target shallow fish or swinging it in shallow current, um, do I reach for the blue fox. Yeah, it's smelling pretty skunky out here right now. So probably not going to uh, come away with a fish here. But we'll give this three or four more casts. I'd be really curious to hear what uh, spinners you guys prefer and in what situations. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear uh, just exactly what it is that you like in a trout spinner. And if you have a favorite brand uh, that I didn't mention here, um, I'd love to know as well. Uh, maybe I can do a fun comparison video in the future looking at uh, these different spinners. All right, I'll see you guys next time out on the water. And just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye guys.